No. Sorry, I forgot to press the button. Hi, everyone. Again. It sounds so scary, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. It, the voice is. Yeah, I need to change it for a male. Like that. I, I have this on Russian and it's horrible. And it like is. some freak woman turned up. <laughs> it's, it's not comforting, right? It's not comforting. So basically, so today we're going to be talking about um, domains and then touch base on emojis. That, that topic is very interesting. And uh, I think Peja will talk more about it. I don't want to take his bits and pieces of stuff we, where he's good at. So Peja, you know Peja already from our meetings from before. So Peja, it's your floor. Thank you. Hi. So my name is Predrag or Peja for short, as Maya just said. Uh, well, you know me from probably from Maya's earlier meetups. I dabble in client communication and I do it in support tickets, community events, education events, things like that. And, sorry. And I wrote numerous blog posts and user article guides and things like that. So, uh, also a fun fact, I like to talk. I like to talk a lot. And I talk with my friends, with colleagues, with clients. And I believe that because of the nature of my work, I'm exposed a lot more to facts and opinions than other people. And wait. Maya. To me. <laughs> Sorry, Slack. I forgot to mute it. Let me just. I'm back. So recently, I had an interesting conversation with a client about emoji domains, and I wanted to see what you guys feel about this topic. Have you heard of emoji domains? Have you, do you know anyone who used them or things like that? Olga, maybe? Uh, I just saw some uh, tweet, uh, tweets about it, but I have no I know, opinion about it right now. It's, it's interesting to find out more. Well, uh, since we all use emojis in our written communication now more than ever, yeah, we use them on in like everyday messaging and we're, there's even that section where it shows your most recent, yeah, your favorite emojis and they're like a big part of our communication and especially online commu communication. And it's strange that emoji domains are still not as popular, even though we use emojis daily. Uh, brands use emojis in their online presence a lot, especially on social networks, but still no, none of the brands used emoji domains. And it, it looked strange to me. So I wanted to discuss this, this with all of you and see what, what everybody thinks. And hopefully- I know that it's even it's possible good. to have such domain, you know? It's possible. The first one was registered, I believe in 2001, even be before we had emojis on our phone, phones. And it is strange that it's still not a popular thing, but I wanted to see, so the way Maya and I saw this meetup today was it's gonna be a sort of a brainstorming session. Uh, I'm gonna pick a couple of characteristics that a good domain must have. And we'll see if emojis can fit in that, there, that picture or not. And I encourage you all especially you, Olga, uh, to speak your mind and let's discuss this. Let's see what's wrong and why we don't use emoji domains. So what is the domain name? It's a combination of letter. Oh, wait, wait, let me share. Very bad PowerPoint presentation. Mm, 
So do, does everybody see this? Yeah. So. So domain name is a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols that someone types in their browser to access a specific web address directly, right? So there are over 3,000 registered emojis in Unicode standard. And with 3,000 different emojis, it's, I'm pretty sure they could be useful, uh, useful addition to when you choose your domain name. Do you all agree? Does someone disagree maybe? Do you have some examples of uh, existing domains? Uh, our colleague from, from GoDaddy, he, he created a search engine for available do emoji domains. It's I uh, red heart emoji dot WS. And it contains a lot of information about like what emoji domains are and how you can pick one. But there, there's still, I believe, less than 25,000 registered domains. And 25,000 is like almost nothing compared to the internet. So let's see what, what the, what makes a good domain name and like go one over one by one uh, see how we can incorporate emojis there so when you start a, a business uh, domain name is a great place to to start establishing your online presence you need to make it memorable so that people can find your website and if you have a bad domain name you're probably not at a good start. And with million domain names already registered, finding that one memorable and catchy one is really a hard, hard thing to do. So could emojis fit here? Do they check this box? Are emojis really memorable? Or is it something that is not so memorable that we just use it daily and we don't really pay a lot of attention to it? Are there enough emojis to cover like every day the most common words we use? Tiana? Well, I think I just wanted to say something. Yeah. For some words, for example, uh, if you have a cat related website and you can put something cute that draws attention, like some paws on, or maybe kitty or something like that, that could be. Maybe that, that, that could uh, make a difference between your brand and the brand of your competitors because uh, it's something that uh, requires a, an amount of cuteness in the domain, in the website, in the media, media presence, uh, and so on. But for example, if you're something like, I don't know, maybe a lawyer, it might come up as a bit unserious maybe to put something like a cat hammer paws. or something. What? Cat paws. <laughs> Not a cat, but like a judge, ju judge's ha hammer or something like that. It might be like a, maybe yeah, you won't can, think that's professional. Yeah, but can emojis make a domain name memorable? Is it are you gonna remember the, the domain name that's catpaws dot something? Well, it depends. Or is it just gonna be cute, but you're gonna forget it? Uh, maybe in the at, uh, at the beginning when we start using it and we see only a few websites with I don't know like uh, Kitty Tail or or something like that. Uh, it can be <laughs> it can be interesting. It can draw attention, and when something is in my attention, I tend to memorize it. However, if we get a thousand websites that use the same emoji, and another thousand websites that use a similar emoji, especially when it comes to smiling faces and skin tones and everything that can be used in that realm, like if I have a I don't know like 
just a general smiley face or just an angry face or it can be a bit confusing i think it's more memorable when it comes to object like a houses or animals or foods or something like that but uh, when it comes to human faces i think it can be a bit confusing i don't know what other people think yeah. it's a very good point uh, i mean uh, this um you need to be first you need to be memorable and you need to uh, make this um very clear without any doubts about what it was exactly. It's like, uh, you know, some kind of competi uh, competi uh, competition is going on and people are registered with a uh, dash between words uh, or some um, E, I, uh, E, A in, 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 in a replacement and you can go to the wrong side, to the competitor, because uh, he registered this pretty same word. So I think the point is to make your very clear and yeah. short. Uh, did you know that in, I believe, 2015, uh, Coca-Cola had a campaign and they bought all of the like smiley faces uh, domains. And when you go to www, like each, it doesn't matter which one. Uh, smileyface.ws, you would end up in, I believe, Emoticoke website uh, presenting their campaign, connecting Coca-Cola and happiness and smiles and things like that. And the campaign was a bust, complete bust. So, <laughs> yeah, <but> they tried. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, this is awesome. Comes... Thank you very much. I really love this. When and uh, emoticoke.com uh, doesn't exist now. It, it expired and there's no website there. So it didn't last long. It's a very interesting thing. I mean, you can say like um, a cat in a different language in so many different ways. And that in that language, I mean, it's it's very different. You don't say cat, cat. You call cat some other type, you know. And your website could actually cover those type of letters instead of the English version of it. So I think there's, I mean, uh, for from some point, I really like the idea. But somehow I'm very confused how that functions in general, you know. Uh, well, like emojis are universal language. Like it's, it's just a tiny picture that we all understand in the same way. But using it online as a part of the domain name proved to be a tricky business. So there is enough emojis and it's, it's I believe, yeah, over 3000 registered emojis. So, and it's gonna be even more and more in the years to come, but it's still not enough and people don't use all of them. They use like 10 or 15 maybe on a daily basis and the rest 2,900 and something they don't use. So it's weird. Uh, the next thing your great domain name has to be is something that's easy to type. Uh, why it needs to be easy to type? Well, uh, you shouldn't use funky spelling. You shouldn't use homophones, that same uh, words that have same pronunciation, but different spellings. Uh, you shouldn't play with words. Uh, all of those things makes harder for your visitors to find your website. But emojis are different. You, they're easy to type. Actually, are they easy to type? They're easy to mistype, I think. Yes, and are they easy to distinguish between? Very hard, I believe. When I say smiley face, I'm sure each and every one of us thinks of a different smiley face, right? Sure. sure. And we use different smiley faces on a daily basis. So they are maybe not that easy to distinguish and they are easy to type on mobile devices, but are they easy to type on 
like laptops and desktop devices. Does anybody have experience with typing emojis on on desktops or mm -hmm. laptops? Funny, if, funny stuff. If you have some application uh, like WhatsApp, they are in, in build. Yeah. But in browser, possibly it's why it cannot be very popular. Browser needs some kind of additional feature uh, to type this like additional notes. Yeah, yeah I, I understand, but not necessarily. Uh, Apple introduced that, how do you call it? Like it's not trackpad, it's that touch pad, like on new MacBooks. And you can, how do you call that thing? I have an old one, so I don't know. uh so it's called the touch bar i think touch bar yeah thank you Bravo, Larissa. And you can you can like choose emojis there i use them daily in on slack and it's easier for me to like use them on a touch bar but when i switch to, to another computer i don't have that option so even though I believed that it, it was easy to use on, on computers, it's proven to be on like only newer Apple devices. So it, it's not something globally accessible. Like every computer has uh, emojis built in and, and uh, keyboard. So a lot of applications do the conversion for you like with regular key, keyboard strokes, but it's not that easy to, to use them on, on computers, I believe. In some application, I use, you know, colon, and then uh, starting to type uh, what I'm about to say, and it's present uh, emojis, you know, like waves, yeah, etc. Yeah, but bro browsers can't do that, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I just recalled uh, because I was uh, staring at the question, are they easy to distinguish? And I recall that some people don't see colors very well, so they can just like mix the color like green and red. And when they have to type a heart, is it a green heart or a red heart or something like that? So it can be yeah. additionally. I don't know for the people also that have some other issues with their eyesight, how can that be? Yeah, but they probably use like Voc, um, something like Siri, and they dictate uh, to to the computer. Like yeah, visual but... impairments usually don't use computers yeah, the same they, way. They use this, uh, accessibility features of yeah. some kind. But and for accessibility for... features, you can say like a red heart or green heart or things like that. Yeah, but only, but the basic Daltonists, I think they don't use that. They just don't see colors and they they can be a bit confused about some Yeah, but colors. they're not going to be using those on their mobile devices and in WhatsApp and messaging their apps also, right? Well, yeah, but I think it's less important. Will I send a green heart or a red heart when I'm sending to my friend or someone? But when I have to see some website and buy something from there, it's important where I'm go going to go, like to some ecology site with a green heart or maybe some other site with a red heart. So like cardiology, can... <laughs> for example. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, let, let's see. Larissa, what do you think? Do you, do you find this emoji thing com, com, a bit confusing or I mean, how does it feel to you? Well, I find it super exciting. That's why I'm here. I heard Emoji Domain and I had to sign up. I think there are a few things. Um, first of all, the question, top level domains, can any can I register them with like any emoji with them or are they restricted? They're restricted. And I believe in 2017, I can disallow registering with like .com and you can only register the emoji domains on 
maybe 15 top level domains like .ws, .to and I'd say that might, um, going back to your question about whether an emoji is memorable or not, the TLD might have something to do with that. You know, if it's like a weird TLD and a weird emoji, I'm not going to like remember it. But if it's some like a .com or something, maybe there are more chances that it'll be completely memorable. Yeah, we could register those a long time ago, but we were, we didn't know what emojis were back then. <laughs> so now it's too late. Is there anyone else who would like to share their experience? Oh, please, Larissa, go, go ahead. Sorry. I, I... Oh, I was just going to say also, um, previously you mentioned that emojis are usually considered like a universal language, um, but it's interesting. I was just reading the other day that um, different cultures interpret different emojis differently. Like for instance, the praying emoji, the angel one, the clapping one. Um, and yeah, I guess you'd have to be careful if you actually want to buy an emoji no domain for a campaign or like something strategic that that could really affect your, your chances as well, you know? Yeah. True. There, there are a lot of open questions with, with registering emoji domains. And th that's why I wanted to see how everybody feels on this topic and to see what are the post possible roadblocks for this to be a thing in the future. And if there is maybe an organic way for, for some of the roadblocks to evolve and not be roadblocks anymore, but to help uh, emoji domains. I think if some you know, famous person will take one emoji domain, it can be uh, a trend immediately and all other will be like a snowball you yeah, know if coca-cola was unable to promote emoji domains coca-cola is coca -Cola. Hmm? i i mean if you know some uh some some cool guy or some cool woman very famous will take one or and make it you know very well known popular, you know popular she would make it popular yeah like pop star it, it's supposed to be uh, uh, someone whose audience is very young who used to emoji more i think uh, fun will be crazy about it and will be stampeded to make one website for their own creativity to express yourself in your domain name. Is it cool to express yourself and make other people to think what it actually means? Uh, it's interesting. I, I, I was thinking the whole day, what would be the emoji that I would like to take for my personal domain? Like, instead of my name, what it would be? Um, and I'm like, and I'm still clueless. <laughs> Uh, Budweiser had a great emoji for, for emoji domain. They had a, like a red heart and a glass of beer, .ws. And it, of course, it re redirected to their website. And well, that's the one it, that got me interested in this. Uh, that's the one I was talking about with a, with a client because uh, Using something like that, for example, Budweiser, I'm never quite certain how to spell that out. And like a red heart glass of beer was simple enough for me to not mistype Budweiser. I like this one. I... It was a good example. Like if your name is not, not easy to, if it's easy to mistype, then it could be better to have an emoji domain. Of course, as an addi additional uh, domain that redirects to your, your website, but it could be useful. Like I have constant confusion how you write jewelry. I have a big issue with this word because you can write it in two very similar ways and I constantly make mistake. So that would help me if there would be a necklace, I would really use it always. But I believe you can use two different spellings for jewelry. Yeah, you can, but uh, it's confusing which is which, which one is UK, which one is US, and you know, and it's like. 
Yes, and that can be additionally confusing for people that are looking for a particular website that has this word inside. So they can go to over to competition with a similar uh, domain name with a different spelling. So. so how does that actually address look like? I mean, it is an emoji, but what's behind like? It, it, it uses like the internationalized standard like the same with with for example japanese domain names you uh, know in russian domains in the russian letters in Kyrillic, they are look horrible if you are you know trying to send it to someone it's just a lot of gibberish <laughs> you know it's all uh, you know you you will translate it to this code and uh, it's, but uh, in your URL address bar, yeah. it looks nice. But when you send it, it, it goes to internationalized format. Yes. And it's unreadable and very uneasy to use, uncomfortable. Yeah. The same thing with, with Serbian. We also use Cyrillic, so it, it must use internationalized uh, uh, domain name in the background. Same as Russian. OK, so we cried enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next thing is maybe a good thing. A uh, great na domain name needs to be short because of the SEO and well, the memorability thing. And the shorter it is, chances of misspelling or mistyping are lower. Like, if it's a short word, you're not going to mistype it, probably. And can emojis really be that needed advantage in keeping the domain name short? Is, is for example, well, I don't have a good example, but uh, if you, you decide a domain name, do you have an example, Tiana? Yes, because I have a domain, it's curled up cat. <coughs> it uses three words. <laughs> and it's like overworthy when I hear it. But if you see like curled up and an image, it has a different kind of vibe to it. If you could see a cat and the curled up like a word, because uh, it has too many C's inside, curled up cat and C and C, and it doesn't look nice in the in the URL. So maybe for yeah, some it, it's over ten letters, so it's kind of long, and chances of mistyping it are yes, yes. Exactly. You and definitely also... need a much domain right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, two. <laughs> we have a curled up cat emoji. No, but we have cat, and then it could be like curled up cat.com if it could be .com, of course. Guys, we still have 25 minutes of our meeting. And there, there's not enough cat well. emojis. Not enough? Not enough cat emojis. There are like maybe five. I know them all, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> None of them are curled up. So the next thing, keywords. <laughs> uh using keywords in your domain it's a great thing but it's also a tricky one it helps you if you use them uh you your domain name makes obvious for your visitors what your website or business is about but you have to be careful if you put in a lot of keywords uh you lose credibility your you your domain name doesn't look trustworthy so is there something maybe, do you believe that including emojis in the domain name help you with your trustworthiness or they don't help you? Would you, for example, when you see a domain name that has an emoji, would you think that's a credible website? It's a trustworthy business or not? Depends what the website is asking for. If, if the website is asking for a credit card, I probably wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, but for it example, it depends example, on you know positioning of the brand. Yeah, but it, it's you know, if you're reaching that website for the first time, you don't know about that brand. You saw that domain name somewhere, or you found it on Google, and if you saw an emoji in the domain name, would you automatically believe that it's not a trustworthy website? Or would you ignore that and be like, let it me check be, the website first? It will be unusual, but it can at attract attention. And if it's something like uh, take funny holidays or something, it can be very, very good served. You know, and if it's a bank system, it can be some questions about the responsibilities. But we here uh, we have bank which uh, whose leader is like uh, he's cutting edges. I don't know how it's called without any root words. He behaved very brutal in social media to attract attention. And it's worked for for his bank, so it's a point. Even if he has such um, uneasy behavior, I think he can we, stand up with such domain. I think maybe for uh, influencers or people that have personal blogs, it can be good. Uh, thing to let people know what the blog is about. For example, if I had a fitness blog and my name is Tiana, if I, my domain was tiana.strongarm.com, it would be like just me or some weight or something. It would be easier for people to memorize my name and not be like a worthy thing like tianafitness.com or something like that. Maybe it's something in in or, or for a cooking vlog for example if i had an uh like vegan shop or something like that or ve vegan recipes it could be like a plant emoji re recipes.com or something like that and would you use just like one emoji or would you use a couple of them as a keyword one one Anybody else? Uh, you're muted, Olga. Oh, sorry. You can uh, possibly use only several emojis and and got some uh, message in it, like yeah. uh, cat plus plus something plus something, and it can have some kind of meaning. And would you but rather in this use, way... uh, use emoji in the middle or start with an emoji and then like add one or two words? Is it possible to have only emojis? Like I'm going shopping and all in emojis. Okay, or I guess it can be done. Star shops or to encode some message in it. And with short, short message, it can be like th three, two or three symbols if it's possible. Yeah, it, it is. It will possible. be fun. But do you want to put that much emojis in the domain name? Each one gives people an opportunity to to mistake it for something else. Yeah. Uh, it I would can say... be clear and short, you know, without skin tones, etc. And smiles. <laughs> like, like Tiana said, uh, with um, strong fitness or some shopping bag plus uh, something else. Shopping bag. Uh, I don't know. For mall, for instance, you can stick two or three emojis and it will be enough. Shopping bag plus shoes plus dress, like a female dress, dress boutique or something like that. 
Yeah, like a panic, panic button. Yeah. But what if, <laughs> what if your competition like reorders your emojis? Are people gonna remember you, how you order them or are they just gonna remember, I believe there was a dress and a shop and something and like try to guess it. So it looks like you need to make a strong connection between them in an order for yeah. remembering stuff. Yeah, or, or use only one to make emphasis, like use it instead of a keyword. Is Maybe. this way, I don't think you can have only one emoji and root domain. No, that's already taken, yeah, but you trust can. me. <laughs> yeah. I, I see you, yeah. Can. You can use emojis like instead of keywords to put emphasis to make your domain name pop out in the crowd. Yeah, and uh, Lokesh wants to say something for some time already. Lokesh, say. Oh yeah, so I was saying that uh, if I put what do you call it, two or three emojis in a domain name, uh, an interpretation you know of different people could be different towards that. So how much also we try, right? You know, a human eye will see it differently. Maybe I could see that, I could see, you know, two or three emojis, like, for example, a shopping bag, a shop or something, you know, as, as maybe just as a female store or something, maybe it, it'll be different from the message that the website owner or the website developer wants to convey. So it's, it's, it's a really hard challenge of the number of emojis or the type of emojis you want to use because it's still a new concept in the web world. I agree. Thank you. This is amazing. Guys, I mean, slowly we need to close uh, the, the discussion and then play a game. So you keep, see who wins the, the story, see who wins the swag and you guys can return to eating your dinner or doing something else. So I, I thought this was gonna be a very like easy story, but it's not, it's very, it's very heavy actually. Top level domain. So the, the last thing when choosing a great domain, domain name is choosing a great top level domain. And uh, it's the .com, .org, something like that. So uh, the trouble with emoji domains is you can't register them to any top level domain. And that's a big, big disadvantage. I believe the most popular you can get is .ws. And uh, because .com is the oldest one and it's a go-to choice for, for everybody because people are, people are accustomed to it, uh, it can be hard to find a catchy memorable domain name with .com. That's why people are looking for alternatives. And there, there's a lot of new top level domains like .pizza or .guru or .pro, uh, maybe .shop, things like that, .tv. And would you, what do you, what does everybody feel about? Is it better to use emoji and, or a different top level domain, for example, .shop or .pizza? Or would you prefer to have like emoji of a slice of pizza and some like the name of your pizza place next to it? Or would you just pick like the name dot pizza? What sounds better? What do you think has, has more potential for, for people to remember it? Perfect combination would be pizza dot pizza, right? But that's not an option. So I think the combination would be you don't have to type anything. You just turn around and there's a pizza on the table. So <laughs> that's true as well. No, but then again, again, you know, there, there's a concept of uh, change management, right? That we all have in our organizations, at least in the big level of corporates. So any, any, anything, when something comes, some, some new system comes in, or maybe uh, 
uh, any change comes in within the organization, you know, there has to be proper level of training and it has to be brought in phases. So the biggest challenge over here would be that it, it, it's a gamble. It's a gamble that when you want to choose emojis uh, with your domains, because people are not really accustomed to it. And you're setting up a business like a pizza store and you want to put a pizza emoji. It'll be really difficult for, you know, people to find your place. So what you can do is, you know, go stick to old school and have that as an additional domain and see what really works. And maybe, you know, at growing slowly, 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 you know, you can start targeting your customers and audience that, okay, we have this kind of domain as well and see what kind of feedback do they give to you. Maybe they use that domain or they use your old school regular domain. Yeah. No, they will type in search engine like um, pizza emoji by pizza because they will not remember how it needs to be typed. Yeah, Google actually has uh, emoji, not just Google, Yahoo as well and Bing. They, they have emoji based searches and there's an entire field like of emoji SEO. So you can just put an emoji of a slice of pizza and add near, and Google's gonna give you the closest pizza places to you. And I was surprised when I when I learned that because I never used emojis in my searches in, in Google, but apparently it's a thing. A lot of people use it. And if, if Google decided to like develop that feature, it means that probably there's a lot of, it's a big market. Like a lot of very young people use emojis, maybe like even more than words, especially on, on search engines. And it surprised me, but I mean, it exists. It happens daily, so. It's a new lifestyle, right? I mean. Yeah. Or maybe a new uh, philosoph philosophy of communication. I mean, who knows? I mean, people in the back days, they also communicated with, uh, how you say, with uh, graffitis, like uh, in the caves. So maybe we're just moving back to the caves. I don't know. Or maybe this is a, a digital one. But I hope you guys liked it. I mean, uh, I, I believe you, Larissa, you have an emoji domain. You used to have one, right? I don't have, I, I feel like when they, like six, maybe six years ago, I remember I like tried to register one. I don't know, but no, currently I don't, but I know which one I would choose. I would choose the donut emoji. I love donut. Probably everybody. I think there, there would be a big crowd behind this emoji. <laughs> okay, I'll pick two then, like oh, a donut and something else. Do not. It's, you know, it's some kind not. of expression of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I could be a donut. Yeah, I, maybe two donuts. <laughs> hey, that's cool. So in order not to waste your precious time, I'm, I'm really thanking you for coming today and listening to this very interesting talk. Uh, emoji domains and uh, something very new to me and uh, I'm, I'm struggling. Just yesterday, I bought a new domain. Hi, Lisa. Nice to see you. I just bought a new domain for a business idea that I have, but I still didn't manage this to get to this emoji domain. I don't know about you. I don't know if you're going to be brave enough to buy these days a, an emoji domain, but it, let me know what's happening. I mean, keep us in the loop. Maybe it could be interesting for everyone. If anything, if anybody wants to say something, um, perhaps um, before we move to the fun part. Well, okay. So I'll stop recording as well. Um, cancel. I almost. I